everyone, and welcome to the second edition of Coaches Roundtable. I'm Jenna Horning, and joining me today are three coaches at Susquehanna University. Directly to my right is Rachel drostek sigafus the interim head coach for the men's and women's swimming and diving team here. In the middle, we have Caressa DeRossett, otherwise known as Dero by her athletes. She is the head softball coach. And on the end is Allison Fordyce, the head field hockey coach here. Um, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about um, what it's like to be a female athlete, what it was like to be a female athlete, what it's like to be a woman in sports, um, how you lead your team, and any of the obstacles that you've had to go through. So starting back to when you were growing up, what athlete um, or fem female athlete did you look up to and why? So for me, I think Mia Hamm, I was, uh, soccer was my first sport that I think I really fell in love with. And being an adolescent, when that team won their first World Cup, like, you know, that, that famous picture of Brandi Chastain, um, watching these women break so many barriers and being so empowered, it, it really inspired me. I was really inspired by Gabby Reese. She was a professional volleyball player and also in the Olympics. And for me, um, reading her book, Big Girl in the Middle, really inspired me because she was a big advocate for strength and females and, and being a strong female. Um, she was literally the big girl in the middle of the volleyball court. Um, even though I never played volleyball, I was still inspired by just the message that she sent. Yeah, for me, it was a little more personal. Um, <clears throat> Valerie Arioto, who was a pitcher for Team USA, she was a graduate from my high school and was my coach my senior year. Um, and so looking up to her since I was a little girl and then being able to play for her, um, she was a big inspiration for me. And looking even now, do these athletes still inspire you and help you with coaching and like talking to your athletes today? I think for me, it's, it's always just about finding the best version of yourself. Um, so no matter what role you play on our team, like that's something that I've always drawn from my role models is not trying to change an athlete into someone different, but really inspiring them to be the best version of themselves. And I feel like that sort of, um, what I've always looked for in coaches, you know, coaches that pulled that out of you as well. So I think I've been trying to do that my entire coaching career as well. Yeah, for me, I mean, Val, she's still, we have a really good connection still. Um, we follow each other on social media. She actually spoke to my previous team um, at my previous institution. Um, I see her at the convention. We still keep touch and she's awesome. Like she, she makes it seem like, you know, yeah, she's an Olympian, but she makes it very easy to talk to and ask her any questions. And she loves reaching out to my athletes and stuff. So I very much still tap into her and follow her and try to get as much as I can from her. Um, I think it's a little bit different for me because some of the things that I probably drew from those athletes as a, as a youth and as an athlete myself are very different from how I approach coaching. I was a very bombastic athlete. I was mouthy and I was cocky. As a coach, that, that's not a very advisable way to lead a team because it tends to lead to power struggles that are really unnecessary. So I've actually had to lean more into um, a coaching style that is like more sit back, listen and absorb before you, you start popping off. You, you both mentioned um, coaching and being an, like an athlete when you were younger, how you mentioned how it was different from when you were an athlete to being a coach. Um, just to kind of get to know all of you a little bit more um, in your journey, would you all be willing to share your sports journey from where it all began to how you ended up as a coach here at Susquehanna? I actually was a competitive cheerleader um, longer than I played softball. Um, so that was kind of like my sport and my sister's sport was softball. Um, so I was really focused on cheerleading and then started picking up softball really in eighth grade. Um, and then just it was kind of like my um, escape from cheerleading. It was kind of something that came a little more natural to me and I was able to be really competitive in. Uh, so started playing and started playing more competitively, uh, competitively um, and then it kind of trickled into high school ball. It was a little late in the game for the recruiting, um, but was able to play. I played at a national junior college in Colorado, um, transferred home for a year, played at a another junior college close to home, and then finished my career out at the University of Wisconsin Parkside. Um, and then from there, I honestly thought I was going to be a vet my whole life. That was what I wanted to be and I was set on. Um, and then my senior year, um, kind of had a tough year and decided this is something that I'm not ready to be done with. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot with it that I can give. So I was able to be a GA. Um, and I got that position at Alfred University in Alfred, New York. 
and was there for three years under an amazing mentor. Um, coach Wisniewski was great. He, I told him I want to be a coach and I want to do it all. And he said, all right, I'm gonna let you do everything. Um, and he really was just awesome. And then also I had a great AD that was a good mentor too. Um, so I was there for three years and then was going to stay on for a fourth year, um, and be an actual just full term, full time assistant coach. Um, and then got my first head coaching job. I kind of just threw my name in the bucket and didn't expect it to get that far. And I did. So I was at Wheeling university. Um, I was there for two seasons, but a year and a half. Um, and then, through Luke, who he was a coach here seven years ago, he kind of told me about the position opening up and threw my name back into it, and now I'm here. Thank you. Uh, for me, I grew up in a, a really rural area, so I dabbled in sports, you know, but they were definitely more recreational and, you know, maybe a little bit of softball, a little bit of soccer on the boys' team, but um, didn't really find my passion for field hockey until I was in middle school and I had two older sisters, the youngest of three, so I really just wanted to keep up with them. Um, I think growing up they were always faster than me and you know more athletic than me. I was always chasing behind them, uh, especially my oldest sister who was in high school. Um, when I was grad or she was graduating from high school when I was going into middle school. So she played field hockey and, you know, back then I, I just went to a clinic that she and her friends put on for the younger kids and I got hooked on the sport and, you know, ended up falling in love with it. Um, lacrosse, I'm from Maryland, so it was a big deal, you know, so I think I thought I was going to be a track star like my sisters, but I definitely was not that. Um, so then I ended up just sticking with field hockey and lacrosse and had a journey through college and you know I remember somebody asking me in my senior year what do you want to do and I was like oh, I just want to be just like coach like I just want to be just like her so um, I think it was just a natural progression for me to to kind of follow in her footsteps. Um, so that's really interesting that you have two older sisters that you're trying to chase because that's exactly mm -hmm. like me. Um, my oldest sister was a senior in high school when I was a first year and my second sister is one year older than me and the second sister is like phenomenally athletic. Um, both my parents played at least one sport in college and my mom played two. So that's a big influence in my life because she was one of the founding benefactors of Title IX. Um, I feel like I owe so much to her having paved that way and, and taken advantage of that opportunity because that opened the door for the rest of us. Um, but both my sisters did track. I was playing soccer. But since they were doing track, I was like, well, I'll, I'll do it too. Um, and it was really neat, our, the one year that we had together, because it was Drazik up, Drazik on deck, Drazik in the hole on the high jump pit. Um, but none of them, neither of them had hurdled. And I was just really drawn to hurdles. And I fell in love with it. And like, you can appreciate the first time I got a bunch of hurdles with three steps, I was I was just hooked. That was the coolest feeling to me. Um, and I, I always say track was my first love. Like my first love wasn't a romantic partner. It was track. And so it was, it was a foregone conclusion for me that I would do track in college. Um, broke a bunch of school records. <laughs> Some of them still stand, which I'm very proud of. Um, and when I was done with that, I, I wasn't I wasn't done done. Um, my brother was running track out here for Marty Owens. And so when I graduated college, um, an intern position opened up coaching the jumpers. And so I would have been my brother's direct coach. And I called him first and I said, Steve, what are your thoughts on having me coach? They had not had a jump specific coach for a long enough time that they had an all American who had really never worked with a, a jump specific coach. And he's like, yeah, by all means. So I came out and coached track for a couple of years, three years full time as the intern program. And then the swimming coach at the, at the time, Jerry Foley, kind of identified, um, had an affinity for coaching. I was looking for mentoring. I knew I was going to be staying in the area. So I started coaching the local YMCA team and the local Y team used to be Sunbury Y. It's now the Greater Susquehanna Valley YMCA is incredibly competitive. Um, we've had teams finish in the top 10 at nationals. Um, some of which I, I had the blessing to be a part of. And swimming and track share a lot of similarities, both in how the team functions, but also what the training atmosphere really is, what you need to be able to put into it to get back out of it. 
That's um, like you mentioning that kind of reminds me of growing up. So I have three older brothers, so I was always chasing them. But of course, I played field hockey growing up for 10 years, so they didn't play field hockey. But I was always trying to do more than they did. I was always trying to do that. Um, And I also I high jump and I used to do hurdles. But moving on to that, like you mentioned, starting later um, and then having older siblings was the was comparison ever like an issue for you growing up um like comparing yourself to other teammates or your siblings and how did you get through that and so my younger sister she's a year and a half younger than me and she's one who played softball so like me kind of being late to it and then playing with her and we end up playing a lot of teams together um our parents never put us against each other like they always cheer us on because she was a catcher i was a pitcher and then she was a first baseman i was a middle infielder but our coaches that we played for a lot, our high school coach specifically, oh my gosh, she's pin us up against her all the time, um, would make me steal bases on her in practice and like put a bunting competition up and say, which is the better Duracet, who can get the bunt down. Um, and I, I never was like, I didn't like it and neither did my sister, but I think my sister was, she was very competitive and she is like, I mean, athlete, like great builds, um, just gifted, like really didn't have to put a whole lot of work into being good. And then when she did put that work in, she was just elite. And where me, I had to practice every single day. I had to put in that work every, every minute, couldn't take a day off. Um, so it was really different and it ended up, we, once it got more competitive, um, we actually went on separate teams. Um, and then when we got into college and played college ball, we both said, Oh my gosh, we wish we could have played together, especially now we've coached together. Um, she's super supportive. Like she's always calling me about here and my girls and everything. And we were saying, dang, if we would have just like been able to come together, cause it wasn't like we like fought over it. We just both like felt this weird tension and did not know how to handle it. Um, and didn't want to upset each other. So it was, you know, just being young, but now looking back, we're like, oh my gosh, we'd have been unbelievable. And we're still each other, excuse me, each other's biggest fans. Um, and, it's definitely like looking back on that's a lot different. Um, but our, I mean, like I said, our parents were super supportive, always pushing us to do our best. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like we chased each other. Like she would do something great, I would do something great. Um, I remember there was one game she I, I hit or she hit a she I, I hit like the winning run in and she hit a walk. Like it was back to back. Like it was crazy. But I enjoyed it. Um, I definitely think it was it was very competitive between us though. And I think. Those are all great points. And I'm thinking back to like a personal thing that a coach told me. So um, a lot of young female athletes or just females in general have like compare their, themselves to other people who they see on the internet, other professional athletes, celebrities. And a coach actually told me, cause I was in my head a little bit. He said um, that if you're too busy comparing yourself to someone else or the person that you're competing against, you can't focus on yourself at the same time. So I think that's something that really sticks. And I think with like competitive households and all that other stuff, like focusing on yourself is so important, but like having that friendly competition is also always a good thing. But a lot of you, you guys all have experience in sports from growing up to playing to coaching. What does it mean to you to be a woman in, a woman in sports? I, I love it. I feel like every good thing I have in my life has somehow been tied to something to do with sports or athletics. I mean the camaraderie, all those things that, you know, I feel like the game day feeling, like you can't get that anywhere else. Like you, it's the best day of the week. You know, you get up in the morning and you don't know what's going to happen. That moment when the national anthem is playing and you're standing there and anything can happen, right? Like it's, the story is unwritten. You've done everything to get to that point, but um, you don't know how it's going to end until, until you get to that moment. So um, for me personally, like I feel like pressure is a privilege. You know, I love, I love the chaos. I love the opportunity to have an impact. And, um, you know, I tell my team here at Susquehanna all the time, like head up, shoulders back, like you gotta have swag. Like you gotta, you gotta face it. You gotta own it. Like you gotta, you know, be prepared to put the team on your back, like all those things. Um, but at the end of the day, the relationship piece for me has always been key. You know, whether they were competitive relationships that, you know, maybe you rub some people the wrong way, but, you know, it taught you something about yourself. Like there's there's just lessons, never losses in, in absolutely everything to do with sports. So, um, you know, it's it's definitely been a catalyst for, for every good thing that's, that's happened in my life, for sure. Yeah, um, I mean, I love it too. Um, I get to stay all the time. I get to play games all day. Like that's my job is to play games, watch games, how to beat win games. And then um, also just like for me, the, the personal aspect of it too, you're a part of, you know, the start of the beginning of their young lives and where they're really building themselves and going to go explore and push themselves after it. Um, 
And so I really, I know how mentor, our coaches have been mentors for me and how impactful they have been. Um, so for me, I, I mean, I can never give back what the sport gave me, kind of like what Fordyce was saying, like everything I think of all the greatest blessings and, and lessons that I've gotten in life, it's been through the sport. And if it's not softball, it's cheerleading or whatever it was. Um, so to be able to stay a part of that, um, it's just, it's fun and staying competitive um, and like feeling that, I think that's also, you know, it's kind of like, a, it's a huge reward um, of like your hard work you put in that maybe wasn't recognized. Like it's coming out right here because you're watching your athletes put that hard work in as well. And then seeing them and seeing everything they do and accomplish, it's, it's just awesome to be just a little piece of their lives. Yeah, I think Allison's crazy of like everything good that I have has come from that. Um, I had taken a break from coaching from 2016 to just a few months ago, and I had been working in the mental health field. Um, and it's so strange when I came back into coaching, people that have only known me since 2016 didn't understand the depth of the identity that I draw from. But I met my spouse here at Susquehanna. I I, you know, I mentioned the relationships that I have with my college teammates and people that have mentored me along the way. I feel like I have such a deep, um, like really belly level appreciation for all of the people who have been around me this whole time because each coach that built into my life, each mentor gave something that they didn't have to give to me. And so I feel like it's my responsibility now to pass that forward. With your teams, you mentioned like those relationships and um, giving back to the sport and thanking like your coaches, like being so grateful for what they've done to you. How do you lead your team and encourage them with all of those things in mind? I feel like it's such a, um, a unique and I don't, I don't even have a word for it, but to be able to bring people together. Like, I know sometimes right in the moment, you know, your athletes aren't always like, oh, I love my coach, thank you coach, like this is great. Just like we're talking about oftentimes, hopefully the impact we're having on them isn't realized till, you know, years later or when you're at someone's wedding or, you know, having a, a reminiscing with a teammate. But what I think is really powerful is that you're bringing them together. And um, we say all the time, like you don't have to be bridesmaids in each other's wedding, but you do have to be good teammates. But oftentimes you're literally creating a group of people that are going to be connected for the rest of their lives. And I, I think it's, to me, it's like sometimes being a coach is a behind the scenes role, like in the moment, like, you know, you're managing all these moving pieces, but to be able to, to sit back and, and see their relationships develop. And, you know, when your teams have those light bulb moments or chemistry starts to develop between lines on the field, all those things, but years from now, like they will have been the best people in each other's weddings because of the connection, the sport, the group, you know, the recruiting class that brought them together. And to me, that's, that's really cool to know that you, you are going to meet your best friends, like, you know, at least one of them. And this, this will always be something that you come back to at some point. Yeah, it's actually funny. That's one of my like biggest recruiting pitch lines, I guess I give is that <clears throat> you don't know, I always say you don't know this now, but your teammates are going to be your future bridesmaids, future godparents to your children. Um, and, and people who you fly over the country to see, um, and you, and they're lifelong people. And so it's, it's huge. And I think for myself, um, I always say we, as coaching, as coaches, we really work hard to create an environment to let those relationships, relationships grow organically. Um, really what you just said resounds heavily with me. So doing that tour in mental health, um, and learning so much more about, like neurology and neurophysiology, but also about how, how a person sees themselves is so influential to how they carry themselves in their daily life. And so um, when I talk with my athletes, I tell them that they are scholar athletes. They are not student athletes because there's been some, I think, um, reorganizing of the word student athlete where it's like athlete student sometimes. And so when I tell them you're scholar athletes, I am very heavily emphasizing there's four years of this and then there's a whole life that's coming after this. And what are you going to be? So what are you going to draw from yourself as a person about perseverance, about work ethic, um, about what you need to be well so that you can perform and achieve? Um, that is a really big part. And it's interesting too, coaching both men and women because 
we have to do a lot of challenging gender norms um, in terms of identifying like, well, is, of course, we know toughness is not only masculine, but, but does everybody know that? Or if they know it at like a this level, do they feel it here? So there's things along that. Or is, are there days that I need to talk to the guys about like resting and stretching that to them is like, yoga is not for guys. Yoga is absolutely for guys. This is a flexibility and a health issue. So there's those parts too about like, how do you draw down on those, those gender norms and really challenge them on this team? Because you're all whole people and that means you're living in a whole spectrum of, of things that you need to be able to cover. And you mentioned like challenging gender norms um, and like being a coach of a men's and women's team. Um, what do you feel are the biggest barriers or challenges facing women in sports today? I think where I, for myself, I think there's still a lot of room to be done on um, allowing women athletes and women coaches to really engage our femininity um, and not see that as a thing that we're supposed to overcome, but for me, rather a thing that I can embrace and amplify. I think, um, I mean, I th there's a lot of parts of being a female coach um that i haven't i haven't hit yet like having a family having children all that side of it that does make it hard being a coach because it's it's a job it takes a lot away from you and takes you a lot of time away from your family um but i could speak on like the young piece i i got my first head coaching job at 25 years old um and it is hard because everybody looks at you as the kid in the room and one of the biggest obstacles when i walked in the first day of, first time being a head coach i told myself puff your chest out and own it you got to act like you're the oldest and, and wisest person in this room um, because you, it's it's all a show, right? If people perceive that. And um, I unfortunately, I have not faced many um, difficulties with it or people discriminate to my age. I mean, I have gotten a little like the sweetheart or kid or like those little comments here and there, um, which is challenging and usually does come from an older male um population but it's it's it is getting a little more respectful i could speak as least for softball um i think they're recognizing a lot more the softball community is so has been so good about it um but yeah that young piece that's definitely the hardest in being a young coach and like i said like the best thing i ever did for myself was just like go in there puff your chest out and own it and a lot of coaches do speak to like yeah you walked in you had it um but it, it is hard and i definitely think um what we can do is embrace those young coaches don't keep reminding them you're a young coach um i think that was one of the best advice i ever got from actually my fiance saying stop saying you're a young coach because if you say it that's what i was going to say about you um and so i really had to get away from that and also not use it as an excuse for anything um so for me i mean like i think that's a challenge i i'm still embracing and pushing of it doesn't matter you're a young coach you're here you got here do like now do your job show that you are here for a reason I think field hockey in itself at the NCAA and even the high school level is unique because we don't have a, a gender component in terms of like there's not a male sport like baseball, softball, men's and women's swimming. Um, so a lot of times we just put ourselves up against football because that's our other counterpart in terms of, you know, in the fall. Volleyball is unique as well. I think there there is men's, boys volleyball at if I'm, I know I'm looking at you because you know a little bit about volleyball, I know. But um, so with that being said, um, I think that we always just coach ourselves up to be, you know, equal to football. And, you know, we love that challenge. Like, you know, they have triple the number of, of athletes that we do. But, um, you know, I think that the way we carry ourselves, like we can we, we earn our own respect. So that's kind of, you know, what I try and tell my team, like, well, you know, let's let's just earn our own respect. Let's let's not just get it because, you know, we are a certain gender or we play in skirts and our sport is literally, you know, one of the probably in some places declining in terms of popularity. But um, I think it's it's a unique challenge to kind of be on that that island. So um, we just try and step up and step out and, and, and do what we can to get noticed. We try and give the people what we want, what they want. Yeah, that's, our, that's our sign. A question. So with so I'm really curious about this for, for both of you, but what you said about there's not, there's not a male field hockey. So in swimming age group, typically women coach until like age 12 and maybe 13, but then they get the male coaches take the senior national and elite athletes. So one of the things that I'm grappling with as a female coach of 
anybody, but let alone guys, is that the system is sort of designed to suggest that women stop coaching male athletes who are swimmers when they hit puberty. Is, is there a similar type structure in your sports? At the, at the Olympic level in field hockey, there's a lot of male coaches because I think internationally, yeah. you know, we follow the international umbrella and obviously internationally field hockey is a male sport as well. Um, so that's, that's a really great question, but it's maybe unique hmm. to your sport in terms of our sport to your sport. Yeah, I would definitely say there's a lot of males that coach um, softball um, and with baseball being the other side of it. But it, I mean, they're, <laughs> they are the same, but they're so different. Um, and I think there is, I think it's hard for the fact that there's, there is more males in it. I think we're definitely getting better, um, of getting more female coaches in it. But I do, I do think that sometimes male coaches get that job offer before a female. Um, and that could be either because they played or they coached for these other sports for so long and we're able to get to a higher level. Um, but I mean, at least I know in softball, they're breaking barriers because the coach who's won back to back national championships is a female. Um, and she's kind of owned her umpire for a long time. I know a lot of male coaches who look up to her, um, but I definitely would say, yeah, there is sometimes, especially when you see like rec ball and travel ball heavily coached by men. Um, and I can't say why that's not, I don't know if it's because the moms fall in that role of team mom. Um, also I would say a lot of the female coaches that are competitive at those levels get the coaching jobs. Like I know when I was looking for an assistant coach, out at tournaments, I was recruiting coaches too. Like when I found strong female coaches with great energy, I was also recruiting them saying, hey, what do you want to do? Um, do you want to get into coaching? I have a position type thing. Um, but I do think for the sake that there is not a lot, but you do see more of it at the travel ball level for the males. Interesting. It's a really interesting, interesting <laughs> point, but I want to go back to something that Carissa said um, about um, like owning it and not saying you're the young coach and just kind of being confident about it. Um, Allison and Rachel, are there, were there any moments in your career, um, like becoming a coach and getting to where you are now that you had to face obstacles being in an industry that's dominated by men? I mean, I think I'm just sort of, um, I, I just, I, I feel like I just never, I never see barriers. Like I just go through them. Like, so I'm sure there have been barriers. And if, if I were to sit and be reflective, you know, there's definitely times, um, I know D Rowe mentioned like, you know, having children or being a female, like there's definitely sometimes issues like in terms of like, I'm in our department, I, I think I may be the only female head coach, you know, with children at the moment. And, you know, I, I just, I guess I never want to be seen as like a mom or a coach that can't handle the same level of pressure or commitment or, you know, not showing up to something because, you know, I want to go to my kid's game or something like that. So I, I definitely think I have sensitivity issues with just making sure that like I fight for my own equality without drawing attention to it or asking anyone else to fight for me. Like I'm going to make my own way, but I'm not going to make my way because I'm a female um, and I, I want someone to, to help me get there. I want to get there because I've earned it. My team has earned it. The respect I get, I want to get because I've earned it because of what my program does, not because is, you know of our gender or you know my own personal life so I'm a pretty private person like you know I don't usually you know talk a lot about my personal life or you know but obviously again you know I'm married to a football coach so I think I have a different perspective on just a lot of the gender roles because I, I live in that world and you know kind of see both sides firsthand um, it's interesting that you said about like having a spouse who's a coach because I met, you know, my husband was coaching volleyball here and that's how we met each other. Um, and I feel like that brings such an interesting component to it as well, to my understanding. Just last night I said, you know, I can't tell if I feel this way because of X, Y, Z or ABC. And he, he has the knowledge because he has the experience both with me and with coaching to be able to speak back to that. But I was really, I was really lucky when I started coaching not for the jumpers sake because they had been without a coach but they were so desperate and i was actually chronologically younger than some of my seniors at the time but they were so desperate for a coach that they would just eat anything they would eat anything up and i was i had a great college coach so i had a lot of knowledge to bring into it um so i feel like as a 
as a young coach, while other coaches may have seen me as, gosh, it's just like, she's just a fresh college grad. My, the athletes that I was coaching were ravenous. They were ravenous to get trained, which was an awesome experience. It's awesome when, like, you have a coach that has so much knowledge and, like, especially coming from, like, an athlete that hasn't had coaching before and it's, like, they're so excited to learn, they're so excited to kind of just jump start. So it's so awesome to have a coach that's, like, excited, too, next to you. And you mentioned before, um, like, sharing, like, with football, like, kind of like that thing um, on campus. What do you think the future of women's sports will look like on Susquehanna's campus? I mean, I think our, our women athletes alone are, are the most successful population in terms of not just their scholarly abilities, but their athletic abilities. Like, I see nothing but full speed ahead for female athletes at Susquehanna. You know, I feel like they're well supportive or supported not only with each other, but, you know, just in general in our department. Like, I, I don't think there's anything that, that can stop us from continuing to excel. We have so much success on the female side of really all of our sports teams championships i mean even with your sport like um such a rich history in in the swimming program and softball program like let's go like i, I feel i feel like we're in a great position and again i feel like we've we've earned the respect that we get you know it's 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 something that is not given to us because we're females but it's something that our athletes and our teams and our staff and our, our department has has earned yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, one thing I'll say since, I mean, I was, I'm not having been here a year yet. Um, I kind of came to the realization really quickly in, in like my second staff meeting about like, I look around at these coaches and how they fight for the team and what they do and, and just popping in their offices. And I'm like, We're, they're elite. Like, I, there was a moment I was like, okay, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, and so, and I, I mean, I just don't, I don't see us slowing down. I, we all talk to each other. Other teams talk to each other. Like, they're so aware of what's going on, especially the females. Um, I don't think, I mean, I could turn to any of my girls and say, hey, what's the score of the field hockey game? Or who won? And what, what did what? And they'll tell you exactly what happened. Um, so I think that is huge that we're, it's not just sport by sport is cheering each other on. It's every sport is, is really cheering on. And um, just how welcoming, even with, like, recruits on campus and how people, you know, other sports find out to recruit, they're talking to them, too. Um, so... I mean, it's exciting. And then just like, you know, hearing everybody saying like the next things they want to push, what they want to go towards. Um, I, I don't see us slowing down. I see more more champ, more landmark championships and definitely a national championship in the future for one of the female sports. I think they're all cruising towards it. Um, it's just it's, it's who gets it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, it took the words out of my mouth, I think, but also into stunned silence for me because what I see from our, our female athletes here and have seen for a long time, even when I wasn't actively engaged with coaching, was a group of people who are never satisfied. They stay hungry and I think that is such a big driver for why programs have been able to sustain success in recruiting, sustain success in your finishes, but just proving over and over like that was good what's next you know to, to not rest on that was good let's take a nap you know it is constantly what are we doing next where are we going next mm -hmm. and I, I from like an inside perspective and hearing what you are all saying i couldn't agree more i think all of our female sports teams are so like supportive of one another and they're always there to cheer you on and i think one of the best things is being able to be friends with people that aren't on your sports team and everyone knows everyone, and I agree. I think everything's going to keep growing because we're not satisfied. No team at this school in general is ever satisfied, so they're always growing and learning and getting to that next step. And you mentioned landmark championships um, and relationships in the past. Um, what aspirations do you have for your team on and off the field or in and out of the pool? I mean, I think for myself, um, when I got here, they came off of a landmark conference championship, um, and that was the first thing they said in my interview. I was like, so what do you guys want to do? And some of them with their arms like this, saying that, yeah, we want to win another one. Um, so I, I think definitely winning more, but not just even that. Um, what they're doing with their time here is incredible to me, um, not just with their education, but like the other organizations they're a part of and all these, you know, these research projects are a part of and all this stuff, they're doing 
just amazing things and I, I like when they tell me I get absolutely blown away like they're just phenomenal people um, and really inspiring and so definitely I could see them you know definitely competing for more championships like I said and moving forward but when they leave here I could see their name being in something that you know some new discovery or something helping people out or just being great community members somewhere or starting an organization for something um, because they're just that hungry they want to make a difference and they don't want to do it for themselves they want to do it for the greater good of everybody else and so that selflessness I could just see them just it's going to take them everywhere so like I'm really excited to see like what these athletes do and I think we constantly do hear things once post-graduation all these crazy things they do so um, I think it's not going to stop here at SU it's going to continue on throughout the rest of their lives yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know how to I say don't it know how to top that, that. <laughs> <laughs> well I have one last thing um, to ask if you had a piece of advice for female athletes whether they are just starting out or if they are a collegiate athlete what would that be I think one piece of advice I would have is innately you know what you're capable of but what are you willing to do so you know what you're capable of but how much are you willing to do to continue in all aspects of your life to again kind of circling back to where i started be the best version of yourself not just on the field but in in all aspects of your experience here um my biggest advice i would say it all the time is be your own best friend because um, mm -hmm. i think sometimes we're each our own worst critic enemy everything um, and I think at the end of the day as an athlete if you could be your own best friend even in the tough situations of not even saying oh you're good you're good but like you can be better like and and being nice to themselves I think that's the biggest thing because there is gonna be times where you're gonna feel isolated from your sport isolated from your coach or isolated from the classroom there's gonna be things that humble you you need that voice you need that positive voice to keep pushing you forward and not letting you lay down and lick your wounds it's got to help you push forward so biggest thing is be your own positive best friend and and keep working with yourself i think the biggest thing for me is to to find that voice inside of yourself to be able to identify what's true about you and and bring that out i think one of the most challenging things and you mentioned it before that women of of all ages are facing but certainly our our younger women is trying to be cast into a mold and that means that you have to cut off parts of yourself that could be absolutely glorious and bring you to that best version of yourself so being able to say like no i know i know who i am and i i am going to break that barrier i'm not going to see it i'm busting right through it that's all very true and certainly inspiring advice and i want to thank you all again for joining me tonight and being able to talk about what it means to be a woman in sports the obstacles you faced and the team environment around campus thank you thank you thank you Thanks for having us.